Hello everybody, this is Mr. Rob and welcome back to episode number 64 of the Houston Astros franchise here on MLB The Show 20. We've reached the beginning of June and it is time for the 2021 MLB First Year Player Draft. If you're excited for this one, make sure you leave a like and subscribe down below, especially if you want more franchise content. Let's make 2021 a good year on this channel. But it's time for the draft as our Houston Astros have been playing very good this year. They just took a look at some of the prospects we scouted, but let's take a look at some of the prospects we drafted last year. Just a reminder. Remember also we didn't have a first or second round pick last year. Our first pick was Sherman Roth, who spent all of this year so far at single A. And then we drafted Cliff Levin with our second pick, University of North Carolina Tar Heel, who's hit very well in double A. From there on out, we picked another outfielder, this time Ozzy Gutierrez. The 48 overall B potential, still got a long ways to go despite being 18 years old. He's played at single A as well for all of this season. And then we ended up with starting pitcher Emilio Zavala, our last selection in the draft. He's a B potential, also very low, just like Gutierrez though. And he spent all of his year at single A so far. So let's get into the 2021 first year player draft here. Obviously we don't have a first or second round pick. It's gonna show that we do. So what I do is I pick basically the worst prospect I think in the draft, the lowest overall, lowest potential, due to the sign stealing scandal and try to keep it realistic in that regard. But here is your order. And we start to get simming underway and you can see a couple of players coming off the board. We're gonna highlight some of these ones, starting off with the number one overall pick, Angel Enriquez out of the Dominican Republic. He's 19 years old, not who I thought the Orioles would pick at number one, but not a bad selection at the slightest. He's going to help that organization. Our rival Mariners, who had the third pick, they picked the best closer, Paul Bolio. We saw him in a prospect draft preview. University of Vanderbilt Commodore. Don't look forward to facing him in ninth innings. Next player we highlight is Rich Kensing, the seventh overall pick out of Colorado. He would have gone to Auburn if he went to college, but... I do not see him going to college. He has arguably the best ceiling out of any prospect. Next pick was Dennis Mock, University of Florida Gator, going to the Padres at number eight. I thought he would be the first selection. He was the best pitcher in college a season ago. We saw him look lights out with that flamethrower of a fastball. He's going to blow that by plenty of batters. Next player, Eric Jolly, went number 10 to the Reds, the North Carolina Tar Heel. Probably who I would have picked as a best pitcher in this draft. I think he has a very good long-term longevity. Then, arguably, the most interesting prospect, the 6'5", Ahmad Sis from the University of Louisville. He is selected with the White Sox at number 12. He's got a very interesting skill set. We'll just have to see if he taps into his full potential. Then, at number 14, Michael Mojica surprisingly went to the Philadelphia Phillies. He didn't play a single game of college ball this year, tore his ACL at Georgia State, decided to go pro, and well, it didn't hurt his draft stock as he went in the first round. Now on to our division rival Angels at pick 16. They picked Ben Diaz, a very intriguing, interesting prospect. Don't really know how that's going to play out for them, though, despite being 18 years old. With the next pick, the Rangers, they picked Kyle Yastrzemski, a very, a more, you know, suitable selection. He's a lightning quick center fielder at 5'9". He will steal plenty of bases for the Rangers. And then Ricky Gomez also went in the first round. The military kid out in Cal State Fullerton, he has a bat on him. We'll just have to see if he can do it defensively. So that does it for the first round. But then in the second round, we saw Gary Wilder get selected by the Seattle Mariners. And the Mariners make it two picks that we saw. UCLA Bruins got very good intangibles. He just got to limit the base runners. Then in the third round, Ryan Benjamin from Hawaii goes to the Giants at pick 79. I was hoping somehow he'd fall to the third round, and he did. He just went 19 picks before us, so that was kind of a bummer when I saw that. And that gets rid of all of the players that we, you know, eventually scouted in the video. So we just had those who we scouted in our free time. So this spot in round three, I looked at a couple of pitchers. Sammy Armas I thought was intriguing. Lon Volpe is a lefty who has a flamethrower as well of a fastball. Not the best control, however. Marco Polito probably has the best control out of all the pitchers at this point. The 60 overall 75 potential. He does, however, limit the home runs more. 
Jaime Campos was another option. He's got the best control or break and velocity options. And then if I didn't want to go pitcher, Chauncey Amar was a very intriguing prospect. The switch hitter from Massachusetts who hits really well against righties who could be a nice platoon maybe in the future. But I decided to go with Marco Polito. I thought he had the best control velocity break combo. And with our first selection, we make Marco Polito and Astro in round three. We'll take a look at our prospects selections and their skill sets after the draft. But then in round four, we didn't have a single player that we scouted. So from this point on, we were basically relying on potential and what we need. And I decided to go with Virgil Williams with this selection. He is a Texas native, so he's not going to have to go far. And we don't know what we're doing with the catcher position in the future. So I thought maybe Virgil Williams would be a nice shot here in the fourth round. Then in the fifth round, I decided to go with Alexis Moya, a relief pitcher. We could always use relief pitcher help, and I know it's not fully scouted, but that 80-80-80 control velocity and break was very intriguing, so I went with Alex Alexis Moya in the fifth round. And then with our last pick, the sixth round, not that many prospects as you can see left. Uh, I looked at Matt St. John as a reliever. I looked at Pablo of Alfonso, Melvin Arnold, a starting pitcher, and I did decide to go with Pablo Fal Alf Alfonso, excuse me, with this selection. Just more relief pitcher help. He has 70 potential. That 80 80s across the board, while I know isn't going to be 80 80s, was too intriguing for me to pass out. You never know when you're going to hit a home run late. So that does it for our picks here in the draft, and that brings us to the end of the player draft. So let's see how our picks did shall we as we take a look now let's close out of this and our first pick was in the third round marco pulito remember lewis knight and randy colvin they were bad selections on purpose they will not be astros so marco pulito was our first selection and he has b potential so not a bad selection here in the third round 60 overall b potential he's going to need some time in the minors to get his walks and hits under control but he could be something more of a back in rotation kind of guy Virgil Williams, the catcher we selected, he has decent upside, but he's already 22 years old and still has a long way to go. So I'm not sure what his future, if any, looks like in the organization. Same thing goes for Alexis Moya. Obviously, he didn't have 80s across the board, but his control velocity and break is somewhat decent. But his clutch bombs and walks are way low. And lastly, Pablo Alfonso, the same thing. He's got a fastball on him, but he's not clutch. He's got deep potential, and I don't know about him. So we really didn't have that good of a draft if you look at it. Marco Polito was probably the best, and everybody else, I don't even know if they'll make the squad. Here's the number one overall pick, Angel Enriquez. He's got eight potential. He's going to need some time in the minors, but he looks like a solid pickup for the Orioles. Paul Bolio went to the Mariners, and yes, he is going to be a stud closer. Already 67 overall, a potential. He's going to be locking down nine innings for the Seattle Mariners for a long time. And we saw in the last episode, they really don't know what they're doing at the closer position. Rich Kinzing, 99 potential. So the high schooler from Alabama has arguably the highest ceiling in this draft class. He's going to take some time to get there, but the Rockies have a dominant shortstop in the future. Probably we might not have seen since Troy Tolowitzki was in Colorado. Dennis Mock, one of my favorite pitchers and one I thought would go number one, went to number eight and he's got 60 overall A potential as well. That 94 velocity is absurd already out of the gate. He's just going to take some time to get some of those other things under control. Eric Jolly out of North Carolina is arguably the most MLB ready starting pitcher. He's already at 71 overall so the Cincinnati Reds have a nice one-two punch between him and Hunter Green for the future. Two flamers at the top of their rotation. Amon Sisk, the intriguing shortstop, is got a potential, but his bat is a lot worse than I thought it was going to be. I thought his bat would look a lot better than that, but if he could tap into it, the sky is the limit for Amon Sisk. Next, a player I didn't get where I didn't catch get drafted was Terry Burns. Terry Burns went in the first round at pick 13 to the Royals, the USC Trojan. He's got a nice control of his pitches, but I don't know if he was relatively first round worthy. Michael Bajika, who went in the first round to the Phillies, has nice potential, but his bat is not very good. I likened him in the scouting video to Garrett Stubbs, our current catcher, and I think these ratings kind of back that up. Next player, Ben Diaz, will go back to our division. I thought kind of a bust at the first round pick for the Angels. A 45 overall C potential, 
Not what you like out of your first round pick, but well, you gotta like it if you're an Astros fan. Next pick though, the Rangers, remember they went with Kyle Yastrzemski, the speedy center fielder at 5'9". Only 18 years old, so he's got a lot more time than Diaz does to get his bat underneath control. But him and Diaz got a long way to go if they want to make an impact offensively in this AL West division. Ricky Gomez, Cal State Fullerton Titan, who at 19 years old has a very solid bat, as we kind of already knew that, but that's very good to see. He's not going to hit many dingers from the catcher position, but he's going to strengthen up that spot for Tampa Bay in the future. Tampa Bay just continues to pick pretty solid prospects. And then Gary Wilder, who we saw go to the Mariners, the UCLA Bruin, has seen potential, kind of what you expect from the middle rounds, even though he was picked in pick two. But he's got very good control, velocity, and break. And the Mariners kind of did a good job of selecting that. They had four good pitching prospects. Jeffrey McCollum, a third rounder, has a potential for them. He's got good velocity, good control, good break. I mean, it's pretty solid across the board. And then they went with Tony Hatcher in the fourth round. He's like got high B potential as well. It's a very interesting and good draft for the Mariners. Here is Ryan Benjamin, and man, I wish he would have fell 18 more spots. I knew he was going to be good. B potential, 65 R overall. He's already got the velocity, the break. Oh man, the Giants got a good one in the third round. Hate to see that he went there. Last player we'll take a look at is another late round gem, and it's from the Texas Rangers. Out of all teams or in-state rivals, they pick a very solid closer late in the draft who could be their closer of the future. So two of our division rivals got their closers of the future. In order to get to the draft, we did have to simulate the rest of the Seattle Mariners season or series. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that one. And we beat Seattle in game two, six to two. So we rebounded pretty good after the walk-off last episode. McCullers had a very good outing. You like to see that because he's kind of struggled this year. And then we win game three, nine to one. Justin Verlander continues to turn back father time as he has another good outing as well. Only three hits allowed in this one. He struck out 11 batters as well. So that's going to do it for the draft episode. Next episode, we'll go back to looking at our major league club. And we have a road series against Kansas City before a short interleague showdown against the Atlanta Braves. And we're going to see Jose Urquidy to start off next episode. I haven't seen Urquidy in a while, and I'm kind of excited to see how he does against Kansas City. He's had a kind of an up and down year. But that's going to do it for the draft episode. Let me know in the comments section below, what do you think of our picks? Do you think we had a good draft? Do you think we had a bad draft? Who do you think we could have done better? And who out of our division rivals do you think did the best? Make sure you leave a like and subscribe down below, especially if you want more franchise content. I appreciate you guys and your support. This is Mr. Rob, and I'll see you in the next one.